Hello, my name is Jamie from Shamrock Girl World and today I'm going to talk about how I grew my tamarind tree from seed. As of July 2019, my tamarind tree that I named Tammy is four and a half years old. I'm really happy to have this plant baby and I've learned a lot from it over the years. I want to share this story on how I grew this tree and how it transformed over the years. This can also be a guide on the experiences and challenges that can occur while growing this tropical tree. But over the years, I took things one step at a time and seeing that this tree is still alive and well, I think I did a pretty good job. So I hope you enjoy. So the story begins in March 2015. I was living in an apartment at the time and I had a miniature indoor greenhouse. I was planning to start watermelons and other types of melons. I was growing citrus seeds and a few other seeds. And being in an apartment couldn't keep me away from growing plants. And at the time, I was also trying to grow tamarinds from seed. I was recently introduced to the fruit and I couldn't get enough of the taste of the pulpy tart fruit. And I was also curious on how to grow the decorative seeds. At the time, I soaked the seeds in water for about a month, which would cause the outer shell to loosen and slough off. When the seeds were loose, I went ahead and put them in soil. I believe I planted maybe 10 or so seeds at the time. I put them in the greenhouse with my other plants. And then one day, I saw a little tamarind seed slowly poking out of the soil. I was so excited and happy to finally see this seedling. I was actually watching it throughout the day, seeing it slowly come up from the soil and slowly sprouting its leaves out. It was cool to see that it was changing by the minute. And it was at that moment when I realized that I had my first tamarind from seed. I waited for more seeds to sprout. A few days later from the first one, two more popped up from their small containers. One was in a small three ounce cup. The other was in a cut up plastic bottle. One of them even sprouted nine days after being planted. So by mid April, I had three flourishing tamarind seedlings in my indoor greenhouse. And by the end of the month, I moved all three tamarinds and a few other plants outside so they can get natural sunlight. We actually had a westward facing patio so they got sunlight during the evening. I watched as the tamarinds absorb the sun and grow bigger and a little bit taller over the days. I kept them outside for a few days, but as time went by, I noticed that small white aphids were eating off the tops of my two smaller tamarinds. I tried killing the individual aphids. I treated the plants with hydrogen peroxide. I tried to do anything that would kill the aphids, but nothing seemed to work. The tamarind slowly started to wilt, and unfortunately, I lost the two little ones. But the original was still growing strong and it actually didn't have aphids on it. That was then when I realized this tree was the one and I wanted to put all my energy and focus on it. I was still trying to germinate more seeds over that time, but they didn't really turn out well. I started a bunch from plastic bags, but they didn't really grow very well. Soaking the seeds didn't work or took too long. And it was also a messy process if you didn't change out the water. So of all these plants that I had at the time, I had the one tamarind seedling. And that's when I went ahead and named it Tammy so I can call it my official plant baby. As Tammy grew taller from its water burger container, I supported it with wooden dowels and made sure that it would stand up on its own. I didn't want it to fall over or get bent as I was moving it. I kept it in partial sun and away from harsh sunlight. I eventually moved into a different apartment and I kept it outside for a while. I still had a westward facing patio and it got a little bit more sunlight during the day. But as the summer went on, it got intense heat during the evening. So one day I accidentally scorched it. Tammy was also touching the wall and burned on contact. I almost thought I lost it. I was really worried about it and it was rapidly declining, but I was able to eventually help it generate and recover. 
I put it back inside and kept giving it water. I would give it a little bit of miracle Grow just to help it out and it slowly but surely recovered and grew back. As the months went by, I kept it inside most of the day, just next to the window so it wouldn't get too much heat or intense sunlight. By the time winter rolled around, I made an indoor greenhouse for it. I didn't want it near the cold weather. I actually had other tropical seedlings that I was caring for at the time. So I kept it inside during the winter and it continued to grow. I also put the other tropical plants inside the little greenhouse. I believe I transplanted Tammy during that time as well, just putting it in a larger container and it just kept getting taller as the winter went on. I kept measuring it and it grew to be about 30 inches tall by the one year mark. By summer of 2016, Tammy got too tall for my greenhouse. I believe it was over one yard by this time, so it exceeded the height of the container. So I had to send Tammy to my parents' place so that it could get adequate sunlight. You know, it wasn't cramped in a greenhouse anymore. I was kind of sad to let it go, but I knew that it was in a better place to grow. It needed natural light and warmth, and I just wasn't giving it that while it was inside. We have hot summers here in Texas, so I knew that it would be comfortable being outside. Tammy really flourished outside in the summer. In November 2016, I brought Tammy inside the house to be protected from cold weather. We kept her next to the window. I continued to water it and I gave it a little bit of fertilizer. On mild days, I would take her outside, but on colder days and nights, I would bring her inside. I was also experimenting on making a heat source using Christmas lights in a tomato cage. That worked a little bit to provide it with a heat source while inside in addition to having the heat on in the house. Tammy lost a few leaves during that time, but it was otherwise able to survive comfortably during the winter. Then in February 2017, I took Tammy outside and added new soil to the container. I also supported it with a stake to make sure that it stood tall and would not break. In March, Tammy put on more leaves and her growth continued. By summertime, I transplanted Tammy in a larger container. I guess the chickens like the new container as well because I had to constantly shoo them out of the container. So that's when I had to put weights or large rocks in the container to prevent them from sitting in it or kicking out the soil as they like to do. As 2017 rolled into winter, I had to keep Tammy outside. It was getting taller and wider and it was just becoming too big to keep inside. So that was when I decided to wrap it up in thick blankets during cold days and nights. I kept a light on the inside of it so that the air on the inside of the tree wasn't too cold. I made sure that the bulb and the metal dome wasn't touching the tree or any of the blankets. I turned the light on during the night and it seemed to help prevent frostbites on the leaves on the inside. But as time went on into the new year, it lost some leaves, partly because it still wasn't getting intense sunlight during the day and it didn't get much sunlight at all, especially if it was still covered. And there were some days where I would open it up, but it just still wasn't enough sunlight to maintain it. So I thought I lost it during that winter. I was really worried about it. I still watered it. I kept it protected. It got some frost damage on the very top because the frost covered blankets touched the leaves. I tried everything to make sure that the tree was still alive by springtime. So when the warm weather came in March 2018, I gave Tammy a citrus fertilizer. I mixed it in the soil and I also added eggshells to the soil. I gave it anything so that it would come back to life. By this time, it barely had any leaves on it. It was twisted and bent from the blankets. You couldn't even tell that it was still alive. I gave it a lot of attention and gave it anything to help it grow. And I remember putting it in direct sunlight just to make it or prompt it to grow. 
And then by early April, something miraculous happened. I saw these large, fresh green buds coming out of the branches. The leaves were getting larger and larger over the weeks. New green branches began to form and grow. And by summer 2018, it was a full, thick, healthy tree. Tammy continued to grow and get stronger through the end of summer. By late September 2018, I actually figured out a new method on treating tamarind seeds and I had a bunch of new tamarind seedlings. I was so excited to be able to successfully germinate tamarind seedlings for the first time in three years. I was so happy for these seedlings that I raised inside the house. But at the same time, the days started to get shorter again. Tammy started dropping leaves, and I also had to protect all of my tamarinds from the cold weather. But this time, I wanted to make sure that I didn't have Tammy wrapped up all winter like last time. I didn't want those heavy blankets to force the branches down or anything like that. I wanted Tammy to still have access to sunlight even though it was short and less intense. So I made a PVC pipe greenhouse made from half inch PVC pipes, zip ties, and plastic drop cloths. I wanted Tammy to be protected from frost, extreme temperatures, and wind. I also always wanted to have a small greenhouse so I can keep my tropical or cold sensitive plants inside of it. I intended to have light sources or heat mats available on the inside. I wanted to be able to protect all of my plants from what was predicted to be a really harsh winter. The young tamarind stayed inside the house next to a large window. They were also protected from the cold glass and air. In winter 2019, Tammy remained in the greenhouse surrounded by my other plants such as my cherimoyas and dragon fruit seedlings. I made sure that the air in the greenhouse was warm or at least away from freezing. But Tammy dropped most of its leaves again. A plant started growing out of the container and I couldn't reach it. Tammy looked really bare, but I can tell that the few leaves that were left on it were strong enough and not likely to fall. Tammy was alive but needed help. In late March, the weather had stabilized to where it was no longer below 40 degrees at night and that the days were consistently warm. I also began to run out of room in the greenhouse. I took Tammy out of the greenhouse and prepared to transplant it in a larger container. The current one that it was in was made out of plastic and it was deteriorating and breaking apart every time I moved it. I removed the parasitic plant that was growing out of it. I thought it was a sunflower, but it didn't really look or smell like one. It had a really strong smell and a large root ball, something that I just didn't associate very well with sunflowers. To this day, I don't know what it was. And I felt guilty knowing that the plant had taken away from Tammy since it kept growing over the winter and just taking the nutrients from Tammy. But I put new soil in the container and added just a little bit of fertilizer to help the new balance. But I was glad to finally be able to put Tammy in a new container, which I hope to keep in there for another year or so. A few weeks after transplanting Tammy, I took my four oldest tamarind seedlings outside for the first time. And for a while, they were staying with their big sister. In late April, a few weeks after being transplanted, an explosion of growth occurred. On all parts of the tree, thick green buds started to appear and grow. Some were small, some were developing large sets of leaves. Tammy was really soaking up the warm and unusually rainy weather. It became full and vibrant once again, and I was also able to see which branches were dead, and I went ahead and trimmed those bits off. I was so happy to see her come back to life. Now that it's currently at the beginning of summer, I plan to continue to watch Tammy's growth throughout the hot Texas summer. In the fall, I plan to make or purchase another greenhouse for Tammy and my many other exotic fruits. 
The PVC greenhouse that I used last winter rain rotted in April and broke apart. I knew it was going to be temporary and I knew it wouldn't withstand the summer, let alone the rainy spring that we had. I hope to have a sturdy greenhouse to where I can control the temperature on the inside and ensure that all plants are able to get unfiltered sunlight compared to the drop cloths. I hope to do more research about pruning as much as it makes me nervous. I'm not sure what the natural shape of a tamarind tree is or if there's a standard shape for it. I'm not going to turn any of my tamarinds into bonsais, but I do want to encourage them to grow continuously and eventually produce fruit. Or I want to at least learn how to encourage Tammy to produce fruit in the near future. I would need to research how to do that as well. There's just so many plans ahead for Tammy and my four tamarinds. Growing Tammy the tamarind has been a great adventure. It's been my oldest tree that I have started from seed, followed by my currently three-year-old loquat tree. I've had great learning experiences from this tree, and I have adapted and changed for it. I'm looking forward to the years to come and hopefully be able to grow tamarind fruit. The biggest thing that I've learned from this tree is that tamarinds flourish in warm weather and full sun. I always need to protect it from cold weather, and if those favorable conditions are met, the tamarind is a hardy, drought-tolerant tree. And my biggest takeaway is knowing that this is a tropical tree. I'm always testing to see if this Texas weather is suitable for this tree. I think I'm really getting there. I just need to help it through the winters. I hope to do an update about Tammy and my four other tamarind seedlings for fall 2019 into winter. If you'd like to learn more about how to grow tamarinds from seed and learn about how I grew the four tamarinds, you can check out my video in the description below. If you want to learn more about the tamarind fruit, where to get it, and how to enjoy it, check out my video, What is Tamarind? And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more videos about exotic fruits, growing exotic fruits, gardening, outdoor crafts, and more. <laughs> Thank you.